Welcome to the sixth, sixth session of a nano electronic series of video lectures. In this session, we shall discuss about one effect that magnetic field can produce in nanostructures that is the Aharono Bohm effect. So, basically, uh, we have seen that when magnetic field act on crystals, it may collapse the energy level of those um, electrons or it may cause oscillations in those devices. Now, let's see what does a Herono Bohm effect generate. Basically, the magnetic fields can produce and control the interference effects between electrons in the solids. So, to if you want to observe these interference effect between the uh, various electron waves, we must ensure that these electron waves have their phase maintained, which means uh, any two electron waves must have a constant phase. The phase of these electrons must not change. But if the electrons are moving inelastically or they interact inelastically with other defects in the system, their phase may get destroyed. So magnetic fields can uh, produce interference effect. So if you want to observe the interference effect, you want to preserve the phase. But in most cases, the electrons uh, may destroy their phase due to their inelastic collisions. Thus, only ballistic electrons whose mean free path is greater than the dimension of the device, capital L, they can travel through the lattice without scattering and these ballistic electrons can show interference effect. So, we shall, so our requirement is to generate ballistic electrons so that we can observe the interference effect that this magnetic field produces. So what the, uh, well this is the essence of the Aherno Bohm effect. So what was this effect? It was in 1959 that two scientists Aherno and Bohm proposed that an electron wave in a solid has a phase factor, has a phase which can be controlled by a magnetic field. So they just propose that uh, in any whatever be the solid, the electron waves has a phase which can be controlled by a magnetic field. Later in 1985, the scientist Webb at IBM tried to prove this uh, theory. So what he did was he took a metallic ring of diameter 800 nanometer. It was made of wire which had a thickness of about 50 nanometer. So we can see this, right? So uh, this was our structure. So this through P we had the inlet and Q was the outlet. Now uh, the electrons entered this uh, ring from the point P and at P the electrons split the amplitude of the electrons split equally so we have a path and um, from there there is a diversion we have two paths say path 1 and path 2 so to pa both the paths this electron amplitude split equally and finally these both electrons are traveling along this path and finally they meet at the point Q and when they meet at the point Q there may be an interference or both these uh, particles or both these particle uh, electrons are interacting right so there is a great chance of generating an interference now suppose what I am doing is I am generating I am creating a magnetic flex I am creating a magnetic flex uh, in the in this region inside this ring which uh, may be perhaps by introducing some solenoid so solenoid they generate magnetic flex right so let me introduce a solenoid into this ring inside this ring 
So what happens when a magnetic field comes across this structure? For an electron in our uh, magnetic field, their momentum, we may uh, replace their momentum P and equal to P plus E into A. Uh, this is what we discussed in the previous session. Here A is your, let me find it here. Here A is your vector potential where B equal to curl A. Now as your electron moves from a point P to Q, there is a change in phase. So uh, there is a two directions, right? So let uh, the phase be initially uh, V. So since the electron split up, there definitely will be a change in phase once they reach Q. Let me represent this change in phase as by this equation. V R equal to E by H integral P to Q inlet to outlet A into dS. A is a vector potential related to a magnetic field by this equation. dS, what is that? Differential with respect to your surface. Now, let me uh, further change it. Delta V, the change in your phase can be represented by V1 minus V2. Now, what may be V1? The phase of this electron and V2 is the phase of this electron. So this change in phase is being calculated. Once they reach the point Q, what is the change in phase? So you can write it as the same equation, right? I'm changing this integral. integral. So E by H integral of A D S in the lower arm minus the upper arm. Here V1 is the phase in the lower arm and V2 is the phase in the upper arm. Now let's see that. What is this? So lower arm and upper arm, which in fact constitutes a circle. So I change my equation as delta V or the change in phase is equal to E by H integral A D S over my circle. Because this is nothing but the lower arm and the upper arm forming a circle. Now, let me use my Stokes theorem here. Integral over a circle f dot dr equal to the surface integral curl f dot ds. So here uh, instead of f I have a dr is ds. So their equivalent uh, value will be surface integral curl of a into ds. So let me uh, rewrite this curl A into dS. This integral circle A dot dS is equivalent to integral curl A dot dS. I am using a substitution for this term as phi from which I get delta V equal to E by H phi. Let me make this clear once again. You have this equation for change in phase. I am splitting this from P to Q since I have two directions. I am splitting is it like this. The lower arm and the upper arm. The lower and the upper. Now they form a circle. So I am rearranging this equation in this form. Now from Stokes theorem we have integral over a circle f dot dr dr equal to the surface integral of curl f dot ds since it's surface integral this is line integral right so let me apply this here instead of f we have a so the equivalent will be surface integral of curl a dot ds curl a dot ds let me represent this by phi in that case, this is nothing but phi. So my equation changes delta V equal to E by H phi. I hope this is clear right now. Now, here let me represent this term E by H. 
it's nothing but a constant right so i am giving a new variable phi not equal to h by e and i name this as the quantum of flux and finally you get the change in phase delta v equal to v1 minus v2 it's nothing but 2 pi phi by phi not now why is that so phi not is h by e and here we have h bar h bar is h by 2 pi let me use the pen here h bar is here we have e by h bar right h bar is h by 2 pi into phi now this term is 1 by phi naught so what do i get 2 pi phi this term divided by phi naught i hope that's clear so this is the equation for your change in phase so we can see that there is a complete oscillation when you change the value of phi by a quantum flux phi naught and this variation in phase can be obtained when you change your magnetic field to b even if your electron is not directly subjected to b so what has a heronov bohm effect generated they have generated <coughs> i'm sorry now they have generated oscillations they have generated oscillation in a closed ring so for that what we did was we took a metallic ring we introduced a magnetic field in the string using a solenoid so we saw that as the electron entered there was a splitting of amplitude and once they reached the end point there was an interference now we are trying to find the phase difference in this so to find the phase difference we considered this condition and from there we use this um, condition because our path of travel was through the lower arm as well as the upper arm together forming a circle using the stokes theorem and small simplification we have obtained this phase and from which we realized that due to this effect there was complete uniform oscillation in our material and the phase can be maintained so that there is proper interference so in order to observe those interference we have ensured that your face is conserved so that's it i hope the session is clear any doubts please let me know thank you